Yeah. Uh, well, hello. This is Morpheus of Limonic Art. You're listening to What's Metal in Germany. Um, your original lineup uh, consisted of four people, I think, um, back in the beginning. Have you ever thought of uh, getting back additional people into the band, or are you satisfied with two persons? Uh, we are very satisfied with two people. Um, we have, you know, it's like both of us has, have played in, the, in various small bands before, and we have always had like problems with uh, the other members of those bands uh, in the way that maybe there are some riffs that they won't, won't play because they think those riffs are like this or like that and they show up on the rehearsals drunk or with hangover or and never like um, they were never totally serious in in uh, you know that ah it's fun to play and we play metal and but it was no more than that and uh, to me music has always been like from my part extremely serious I've always been uh, maybe I've, I've never like wanted to be famous or something but I, I wanted to to um, make my music become something not a joke that we do because it is funny but something we do seriously because we f feel it in the deep of our hearts that this is something we burn for and I, I think that uh, both Diamond and I have had like problems with that in all our previous bands and when we met we just started jamming together and uh, we uh, we found our, our uh, musical taste and our what we desired to make was so equal that we really never ran into trouble with uh, with uh, the things we had you know I almost always thinks that Diamond's riff, riffs are great and uh, I kind of never think they are bad but we sort of work it out it's not like no I don't want to play that because that has been in the other bands you know so like bringing more people into it will just bring more uh, uh, disagreements and uh, more dispute in the band. In what other bands have you played before? Uh, I would say bands that are not worth mentioning. Uh, small garage bands uh, which never have achieved anything. So it's, uh, it's of no importance. I think uh, you never struggled for a long time in the demo scene or nor you did uh, any promotional work. Have you searched directly for a proper deal for Limbonic Art? Well, uh, that was the intention with the demos. Was uh, like we never sent anyone, uh, at least of the first ones, to private people. We always sent to magazines or labels, because uh, uh, we thought like the sound was uh, sadly it was so shitty that it wasn't kind of worth to have other people listening to it except for those who could give us an opportunity to to take another step up the ladder you know so uh, those demos were never intended for the public um, you did your first gig in a town called Sandefjord I think several years ago uh, how did that one turn out and what are the differences to the gig tonight uh, well the the very first gig we had was uh, uh, well, the fact that we were uh, uh, very unexperienced live, just as uh, as a two-member band, and we were very nervous about uh, how it would turn out. And uh, I handled all the synthesizers in addition to the guitars. It was only me and Diamond on stage, uh, and that was the time that I found out that was never going to happen again. I had to have someone to handle all the electronics because uh, you can imagine how stupid it is me go out on stage, play guitars and stop and running back to the synthesizer and start picking at the nods and then go back and uh, one, two, three, oh, then we're back again, you know. So, um, plus the, uh, the, the equipment has of course uh, improved 
So I had just the lousy little keyboard shit thing that had lousy sounds and and so on. So uh, I think we're like uh, seven or eight or twelve miles away from that concert now. Um, the girl tonight who handled the keyboards, she didn't play anything. Is that right? She she just changed uh, the discs. Yeah, she is uh, what we like to call handling the electronics. She's. Um, She's not playing, you're right there, but she is making sure that everything goes as, as it should. And uh, uh, she's like our link to the sound engineer and the monitor man. And uh, yeah, she just makes everything work like a roadie or crew, crew member and a little bit more. She sings, of course, uh, on some occasions. Um, you painted all the covers? And also the cover for uh, Odium, I think. Had you an education in art, or have you trained yourself? Um, um, well, I have some education. I I spent three years in an art school in Norway, uh, which I think was rather boring, and uh, I probably didn't learn that much there because, of course, you you learn techniques and so on, but. Uh, uh, it, it was all like, always like paint bananas and apples, you know, and it was not very inspiring for me to go there. So I usually painted all the things that I was not supposed to do. <laughs> but uh, I, I think that mostly it's it's self-learn, and um, uh, I I learned extremely much when I did the the first moon cover because I I did everything from scratch to to the printing originals and um, I, I had a guy that I went to school with who was helping me out a lot and um, he introduced me to uh, to computer works and uh, and so on and um, I, yeah I, th I think that what I have is just self-learn mostly at least what is your job besides uh, limbonic art uh, I print T-shirts in a local factory in in Sunfjord. Uh Fucking boring. <laughs> Perhaps you can keep your uh, T-shirt prices very low by this way if you print them yourselves. Yeah, we have a new deal with uh, with Plastic Head now, so uh, uh, it's it's for uh, just not having to think about it. I just send the images and the motifs. And uh, then I don't have to to think about it. Besides, um, the factory that I work is is quite small, you know, in the, at least in a worldwide uh, spectre. So uh, I don't have the ability to to create the T-shirts exactly as I would want them to be. So uh, I just make some for us personally, you know. Um, in all the interviews I read about you, um, you never did these uh, typical black metal comments about Satanism and uh, stuff like that. Do you want to separate from the rest of the scene by this? Uh, both yes and, and no. Uh, in the way that uh, I don't really want to speak about Satanism that much at all because it's, uh, it's a topic that I'm not very interested in, really. Uh, I'm I'm kind of an anti-religious guy, uh, or maybe not not anti either because I I just don't care. I I do my thing, and uh, others may believe in Satan or God or uh, the elder ones or the universal ones or blah blah blah. You know, I I I I kind of believe that that uh, when you have need of a god whatever you call it then you have maybe lost a little bit of the belief in yourself and uh, I believe that gods are something that man creates when he has to believe in something but himself uh, where do you see the possibilities to expand your musical uh, concept in the future or have you found your own style now? Uh, well, I, I guess we have found our style because uh, like the, the basics of our music will always be, uh, you know, uh, lots of synthesizers and, and uh, the drum machine and, uh, and so on. 
but um, as as you get more more equipment and so on, you can expand the the sound possibilities. And uh, I like always try to uh, to to find new things to put into the music and uh, just mix various kinds of sounds that are very non-typical for for black metal. You know, it's. Uh, um, black metal is very much like strings and the R choir and, and uh, that kind of stuff. And uh, I, I always try to to expand that. And I personally, I very much like to use the uh, these kinds of sounds like R choir and uh, and uh, strings and so on. But I always try to improve them to to sound as good as possible. And um, I always try to to mix uh, uh, various kinds of, of styles uh, into the music and just see if it, it fits with, uh, with the, the aggressive black metal style of music. And if it does, then I will use it. And if, if it don't, then well, what the hell? I have at least tried, you know. I, I never like say we are a black metal band and we should play only what we have always done because uh, then you'll end up like Iron Maiden or dun, 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 you know it's uh, so you, you know an Iron Maiden album like that in any album and of course you'll probably always know a Limbonic Art album but I will always try to to uh, expand it and there's, there's one thing um, that I, I, I think fits really well with this, and that was something that uh, Kerry King from Slayer said a couple of years ago. And he said that we will never be a band that makes a left turn and leaves everything behind. We will make a left turn and bring everything with us. And that I think is important because I don't think you should change, like totally just go from A to H, you know, just, you have to go the, all the steps and and th then everything will develop naturally because they will come like step by step. So what are your uh, basics of uh, songwriting? What comes first? Uh, the, the most usual thing is that uh, I make synthesizer things first and then we go for the guitars and then the drums. But that always changes too because Sometimes Diamond comes with things, and uh, of course he always plays guitars, and uh, that's it's like depending on what moods we are in, and uh, a kind of uh, more like old style uh, the metal type riff usually comes from us jam jamming on guitars only, because then it's like more pure to the core, and then I add synthesizers afterwards, so it's that will change all the time. You know any uh, amounts of uh, CDs you sold already for the f uh, for the older albums? If you any sales? Yeah, it's uh, around eighteen to twenty thousand each. Yeah, so it's uh, we have sold actually uh, you know way more than we thought we would, and um, I I know that the first time we printed Moon in the Scorpio, we were planning on printing like maybe a thousand copies and uh, then that expanded before we actually printed it we ended up with printing four thousand and those were gone in like two and a half months or something like that so all the albums have have uh, sold uh, what's it called um, a little bit all the time you know it always sells more at the first of course and then it like slows a little bit down they have kind of s stayed in a very acceptable uh, niveau so um, yeah we're very happy with the sales so you must be a priority on nocturnal art productions yeah yeah we're number one <laughs> yeah but you know that's that's uh, like uh, we were the first band that was signed on nocturnal art and Nocturnal art has grown with us, so we like. In, in a way, we we get bigger, and nocturnal art get bigger in uh, on each our side. So, um, 
all the relationships there are, are great and um, we have always had the, the ability to do whatever we want when we want it. So, um, yeah, that's been great. Okay, last question. Our program is called What's Metal? What is metal for you? Oh, <laughs> well, metal is fast guitars, I would think. Metal is when music kind of kicks you in the face. That's, well, it's a fucking hard question to answer. Yeah. But still, yeah, I, I, I think that metal is kind of when you, you feel that the music is, is pounding in your body and you get like a rush from listening to it. Because I feel also that Prodigy is metal to me because they, when you play Prodigy loud, then it's really pounding. So, um, yeah, but still. Prodigy also uses fuzz guitars, so uh, <laughs> that's the main thing with metal at least, is fuzz guitars.